There's a little bit of sailing in this week's episode, but this is mostly an episode about cheese. Hi, we're Laura and Stu. Last summer, we left our lives on land to sail full-time on a 36-foot sailboat Delfino. At this point in our journey, we've sailed over 500 miles in the space of a month, travelling from the south coast of England to explore the locks and islands of Scotland. One of those islands is the Isle of Mull, home to the Scree Brewer Dairy, who make some of the best cheese we've ever tasted. So I hope you enjoyed the cheesy content in this episode, because I'm very excited to share quite possibly my favourite Scottish island with you. So excited for cheese. Leaving Owen after four days. It feels good to be back out moving again, to be honest. And I'm super looking forward to being on anchor. Like, marinas are okay, but there's lots of people and they kind of smell and there's lots of berries. And there are a lot of children in this green, and there's, there's a, a lot, lot of screaming talkers. Yeah. Heading out into the mountains, find a secluded lock, and drop the hook in for a little while. We had a great sail from Oban, 15 to 20 knots of wind on the beam, which is Delfino's favourite and fastest point of sail. A month in and everything was starting to feel easier and more familiar. We knew more about how to set and balance our sails, we'd got used to timing our passage with the tide, and we'd even got used to the evening gusty winds that we kept encountering as we came into locks. So Tobermory, doing a quick motor, wind's dead on the nose, we're motoring up the sound Hang of Hang on, before you get too far into this, I think I need to explain what Balamori actually is, because yeah. like, I'm sure 90% of people watching this are like, what is that? So Balamori was a kids TV show in the UK, I think in the early 2000s, but it was filmed in Tobermory where we're going now, which is a very picturesque fishing village. Yeah. The other exciting thing about going to Tobermory is that there is a famous dairy on the island of Mull that you can walk to from Tobermory, so we're going to go and explore that. Today. You've got a, a whole host of cheese related yeah. plans. So many future. cheese plans, yeah. And there's a distillery that makes both whiskey and gin, so we might do a gin tasting to give ourselves a little bit of a, a little bit of variety. An excuse to get a bit hammered. Yeah, so Night out cheese, Night out in Tobermory. Cheese night out and constantly singing the Balamori theme tune. Ah. What more can we ask for? But for now we're just um bashing our way up the sound of mall with eighteen knots of headwind. It's just a little bit bashing. <laughs> it's a little bit, bit rolly. But yeah, doing what to do is very exciting that we've got a worthy battery charger. Woohoo! Two hundred and eighty watts. Oh wow. Nice. That is exciting. That is exciting. What's, what are our solar panels rated for? Uh, 280 in total. Okay, so we're getting basically max solar output right now and alternator. Yeah, I don't know if we're max, but we're probably pretty close to it. Cool. So excited for cheese. The Sound of Mull is a narrow 18 mile stretch of water between the island of Mull and the mainland. It's three miles wide at its widest point, but the majority of the sound is narrower and dotted with islands, rocks and shallow areas that we have to avoid. So, as with much of our sailing in Scotland, the navigation kept us on our toes. Despite the headwind, we eventually made it to Tobermory and picked up a mooring ball in the harbour. As usual, we were very keen to check out a new place. So keen, in fact, that I nearly flipped the dinghy on the way in. It's a bit wavy. Oh, God. <laughs> Tobermory was built in the 1780s as a model fishing village, but according to the internet, has never really managed to be that successful at fishing. Tourism has been much more profitable for Tobermory thanks to the brightly coloured houses and picturesque seafront. 
We checked out the aquarium before heading over to the distillery for a gin tasting. How are we feeling today, Laura? A little bit slower than usual. A little bit of gin was drunk yesterday. A lot of gin was drunk yesterday. Coffee is necessary now. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we had a great time with the gin tasting. It was really good fun. <laughs> feeling a little bit tender today. Self-inflicted pain, but just cozied up with the weather being horrible outside. Yeah, it is horrible weather. Uh, we said we were going to go to the dairy today, but it's raining so much that uh, we might we might just... Uh... Nah, I think let's do it. We can do the dairy. No, you said you wanted a zero. No, nah, let's do the dairy. Okay. I think we should do the dairy. It's cheesemus. How could we not do the dairy? It's, it's only cheesemus if it's actually Christmas. No, it, today is cheesemus. It's cheesemus. <laughs> it's cheese day. I'm, I'm, I, am, I am excited about the cheese, but I'm also a bit hungover. Yeah. <laughs> Gloomy day on the way to the Cheddary. Cheddary. Because it's Cheddary. the Cheddary. The Scree Brewer Farm is well worth a visit if you find yourself on the island of Mull. It's a 20 minute walk from Tobermory, which I'm sure would be much more pleasant on a day with better weather than it was when we went. As well as producing great cheese, they also have an excellent cafe and a farm shop. How is the cheddar? Really, really good. Yeah? Yeah. Very tangy. I'm not, um, sometimes, sometimes really tangy cheddar can taste kind of like it's moldy, not like that. It's just like very savoury and creamy. Delicious. But the highlight of our visit was the tour, taken by Chris Reed, the owner and founder of the dairy. She and her husband moved their family from Somerset to Mull in 1979 and set about rebuilding the ruined farm that was originally on this site. They make a cheddar-style hard cheese and a semi-soft blue cheese, both of which we thoroughly enjoyed. Chris told us all about how recycling and sustainability are a key part of their cheese production, from using a swimming pool as a heat recycler, deriving all of their energy from sustainable sources, and recycling the whey, the main byproduct of cheese making, into animal feed and spirits. If you're based in the UK, you can order their cheese online, and I'll leave a link to their shop in the description box. Obviously, we didn't leave the farm empty-handed. We came back with a few blocks of cheddar and some bacon from the farm, ready to turn them into dinner. Everyone on the internet can see what half measures you pour out now. So squidgy. I really hope the camera's picking up the sound of this. Sounds like um, 
mountain food, you know? Good, yeah? Oh. So good. So good. <clears throat> happy that you went to the cheesery today? Yeah, very happy. And I didn't feel like cooking when we got back. And I'm so glad that I could. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome, isn't it? Try it? Yeah, go for it. Holy moly, that is amazing. God, you know, that really does taste like um, Dirty Flet or does, Crozzy Flet. It? Yeah, oh, that is so good. The next day we moved from the mooring ball into Tobermory Marina to charge up our batteries before we moved on. There were lots of big, beautiful old boats stopping here and a great community atmosphere around them. We really enjoyed our time in Tobermory. The cruising guides hype it up, but for very good reason. See you next time when we continue north round Ardnamurkin Point, the most westerly point of mainland Britain. We anchor in our most Scottish anchorage yet and check out Britain's most remote pub.